Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. The Feast of Prosperity event, sometimes known as the Hut event or the Fall event, is a limited time event in Star Wars The Old Republic. This event only takes place once a year in the late fall. The event focuses on a gourmet feast being held by the Huts as a charity event for the less wealthy of Nar Shadda. During the event, you can earn some unique rewards including a set of orange robes, some fun emotes and toys, a chef's hat, and a lot of decorations. You can participate in some parts of the event as early as level 20, and the event is available to both free-to-play and subscribed players. This event lets you cook gourmet dishes and deliver food to patrons as a droid in two minigames, as well as gather exotic ingredients in the open world and from world bosses. To start the Beast of Prosperity event, Look for the Festival Crier character on the fleet. They'll be located near the Northern Elevator on the Republic fleet and near the Southern Elevator on the Imperial fleet. You must watch this introductory cutscene on the fleet before you can start the event. After you watch the introductory cutscene, you can either fly to Nar Shadda with your ship, or if you want to be efficient, you can open the activity window by clicking the button of three little people near your minimap, then go to the solo tab and pick up the Nar Shaddaa heroics, which will teleport you to Nar Shaddaa. You can then take a taxi or quick travel to the Upper Promenade. The event is located in the northern part of the Upper Promenade, and there should be a quest marker there if you talk to the crier first. Once you arrive, speak to both huts for more information about the event, and then you'll be rewarded with a fun item called Single Use Food Launcher that you can right click when you have another player targeted, and it will chuck some food at them for fun. After you talk to the first two huts, that'll complete the introductory quest, but more story will be rolled out over the three-week course of the event. The first story quest is introduced when the event is launched. To pick up the first story quest, go back and talk to the first hut you spoke to during the introductory quest. The first story quest gives you a ton of tokens as a reward for relatively little work, so you may even want to run this quest on multiple characters. While that story quest is one time per character, the rest of the event is focused on repeatable minigame quests as well as exploratory quests. There are four types of quests for the event and weeklies that go with them. There's the serving quest, cooking quests, the gathering quests, and world boss quests. The easiest way to get all these quests is simply to pick up all the quests in the Feast of Prosperity event area. They're all grouped together across multiple terminals. Note. The world boss mission does not show up until you pick up the prep work quest first, and you can only have one Kenhini Rush quest at a time and one cooking quest at a time, though you can pick up the other one of each after you drop or complete the first one you picked up, so there's like a story and then there's a harder mode. So the first type of minigame is the Cantina Rush, a fun minigame where you deliver dishes to guests of the feast as a serving droid. You must pick up the correct dishes and deliver them to the correct patrons. There are two modes you can pick up from the quest terminal, and you can do each mode once per day per character. The easier mode has you deliver 25 dishes and only has a single round, while the more difficult mode has five rounds and each round seems to get progressively faster but still has 25 dishes to deliver per round. To start the Cantina Rush, pick up your desired Cantina Rush mode quest from the Work Request Board Terminal, and then go to the glowing blue door that's between the two huts. As the minigame starts, you'll start seeing the tables have symbols appear above their heads. These symbols represent the dish that they'd like to eat. You can pick up dishes at the front of the room, and when you take a dish, another one of the same kind will appear in its place a few seconds later. There's five different dishes, and they can be differentiated by the color of the shape behind the food, the picture of the food, and the shape itself behind the food. Don't be confused by the color of the very large blinking circle around the guest food order, as that signifies how long you have left to deliver their dish before they get angry. It'll cycle from blue to green to yellow to orange to red, and then the timer will run out. You can also see how much time you have left with a guest by the quarters in the large blinking circle, which disappear as the time counts down. To actually deliver a dish, roll your droid up to the food counter at the front, Stand in front of the dish you want to pick up, and right-click the glowing blue dish. You can pick up up to four dishes at a time, but you get slower the more dishes you pick up. If you're doing the easier mode, you can deliver one dish at a time, but the harder mode requires you to be more strategic. The sweet spot seems to be two dishes at once, and pick up a third dish if there's three tables waiting for orders near each other. 
Once you get to a table, you can press the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 keys on your keyboard to deliver the food to the table once you're close enough. You can see which key corresponds to each food on your quick bar, where you can also click the food delivery if you prefer that to using your number keys on your keyboard. If you bring the wrong order to the wrong table, nothing will happen when you press that food's key. If nothing happens, double check you're pressing the correct key and are at the right table and have the right dish. If you accidentally picked up the wrong dish and want to dump it out so it doesn't slow you down, go up to the trash can near the front serving area and use your number keys to throw out the dish you don't want to keep. In the easier mode, the quest will auto-complete the event once you deliver 25 dishes. It will also track your failures up to five dishes, but won't actually fail you. And you can keep going until you succeed, as far as I can tell. There's also a hidden achievement and bonus quest for doing a cantina rush perfectly without failing any tables, which will give you an extra 10 tokens on story mode and an extra 20 tokens on hard mode. The second minigame during the event allows you to cook a dish by following the instructions of a chef. There are also two modes, just like the Cantina Rush, you can pick up from the quest terminal, and you can do each cooking mode once per day, per character. The easier mode lets you cook without a timer, while the harder mode is timed. To start the cooking minigame, pick up your desired mode from the work request board terminal, and then go to the glowing blue door that's a bit of the ways down the promenade. Just follow the quest marker. Once you get inside, the chef will start giving you instructions. You'll need to do things like turn on the stove by right-clicking the glowing blue knob or pick up the ingredients, which will also glow blue. If you need to add an ingredient to the pot or grill, you can use a temporary ability to chuck it in there <laughs> once you've picked it up. In the easier mode, the ingredients are highlighted in blue, so they're easy to find. In the harder mode, there are very short timed rounds between cooking and the ingredients are not highlighted so you'll need to hunt for them by rolling over them to see their names or memorize where they are by what they look like. There's about 16 ingredients scattered around the room, and if you're having trouble finding any of them, I've got a detailed labeled map located in a link in the description of this video that shows where each one is. There's three hidden achievements related to this minigame. The first is to start a food fight. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to do it. There's also two kind of mystery ones that at the time of the launch of the event, we don't really know how to get them. Also heads up, if you happen to be a group, I highly recommend dropping out of the group before you enter the cooking mission, as sometimes what will happen is you'll be in a group, pick up your cooking mission, go to the blue door, and it will kick you out and the door will no longer glow. If that happens, leave your group, drop the quest, re-pick it up from the terminal, and it should be glowing blue again and allow you to go in. The third type of quest is the prep work exploratory quest. The prep work quests change daily, it's as far as we can tell, and send you out into the open world to go gather exotic ingredients either from weak enemies or from glowing blue objects on the ground. These items are usually located near the world bosses of the planets. You can pick up the prep work missions from the Feast of Prosperity Ingredients request board. Note, the board will be lit up even after you pick up the quest to remind you to come back tomorrow. You can only pick up the gathering quest on the day it's available, so there will only ever be one gathering mission on the board at a time, and that will be the one assigned today. I have personally had some funky stuff happening with which quests I get from the board depending on my character and when I pick things up in the past, but in general I think that's how it's supposed to work. If you need better instructions about the individual prep work and ingredient quests, or maps on how to easily get to those areas quickly, feel free to check the link in the description of this video. The final type of event missions will instruct you to fight a world boss, much like the prep work quest, you can only pick up the world boss quest on the day it is available, so there will only ever be one world boss mission at a time, and that will be the one assigned to today. These world boss missions are really fun, and you can do them even if you're not very geared at all, as long as you're vaguely within the right range of the level for the boss or higher. During the event, the world bosses respawn every three minutes, so you don't have to worry about waiting around. The easiest way to get into a world boss group is simply head to the planet that the world boss is located on, if you want, use the heroic quick travels to save some time getting there, and uh, put in general chat that you're looking for a world boss group, or if someone in general chat is saying they are forming a group, let them know that you want in. Many groups will also have something called a summon. This means that they will be able to teleport you 
to their location, um, usually right in front of the boss to save everyone time and make sure everyone gets there quickly. The summon is shown as a small notification on the top left of your screen. This is very important to save your group some hassle. Please, when it pops up, if you're far away, press the check mark. If you're already in the location, immediately press the red X while there's a summon going out if uh, there's at least one person who has not accepted or rejected the summon notification, then the group cannot invite any more players and this can really hold up putting groups together. While you're there, please also be careful not to accidentally pull the world boss early. Um, this will cause your team a lot of grief as one, they won't be ready for it, and two, not everyone may have gotten there on time as the group leader is likely waiting till the last moment to summon the group so they can get as many players as possible. If you're playing in the wee hours of the morning and you're having trouble getting a group together, most of these world bosses can be done with as little as four or less people. You mainly want a tank and a healer in these tiny groups. And if you have a huge group, <laughs> your roles really don't matter as long as you have at least one or two healers. Um, I noticed in the mornings on my server very early before everyone woke up, I was able to even get eight to 16 people for world bosses if I was a bit patient. In the afternoons during the most uh, common time for players to play on your server, I noticed that uh, groups were forming every five to ten minutes and those groups were filling all the way up with tons of players in them. So if you want to go do world bosses on multiple characters, have at her. It's really fun, social, and it's a very unique time of the year. This normally doesn't happen. For the different world bosses for the event, I also have on a link in the description of this video um, detailed maps about how to get their Imperial and Republic side, as well as the closest heroic shuttle, um, the quick travels, and any taxis that you can take. Um, so if you're planning to do like a guild or group run, you can share this with them beforehand so they can get there easily if you don't plan on just summoning them there. Unlike many other events, this event does not have a reputation track. Reputation is a way of gaining favor with a different faction by completing quests for them, and it will grow your level with them over time. This event only has a special currency called prosperity tokens that you can save up and spend on the rewards you want. So the Feast of Prosperity rewards are all purchased with the Prosperity Token currency, which is earned from doing any of the daily or weekly quests related to the event. There are five weekly quests that reward many tokens, and as a solo player, you can do four out of five of them, including the large weekly that rewards 2,500 tokens per character per week. You don't need to do the World Boss Weekly to complete the large weekly. Though I actually highly recommend it, even if you're normally a solo player, they're pretty fast and pretty painless. To complete all the weeklies, you'll need to do the event at least three days a week, as the weeklies require you to do three daily quests, and you can only do one daily quest per character per type per day, <laughs> but a new one will pop up on the next day. On a single character, if I did the math right, if you did every daily quest once per day, every day of the week, which would also complete all the weeklies, you could earn a little under 10,000 prosperity tokens per week per character, plus another thousand by doing the story quest. Don't forget, you can do the event on as many characters as you want if you want to continue earning rewards after you've completed all the dailies or weeklies on your first character. This may even be more efficient for you if you have many characters, as you can do just enough quests on each character to complete the large reward weeklies and then jump to the next character and start working on dailies there. If you decide to do this by doing the easy cooking, easy serving, and gathering mission three days a week, thereby completing all the weeklies, you get about 5,500 tokens per character. I've also personally been having a lot of fun jumping between all of my characters doing the story mission. The first story mission rewards 1,000 tokens per character and it's pretty fun and easy and also has a couple of different variations you can try out. If you're trying to speed run the first story mission um, as many characters as possible for that thousand tokens, I've also got a little guide submitted by another player about how to speed run through it as fast as possible. You can see how many prosperity tokens you have by clicking the currency tab of your inventory. So when you roll over the item that pops up for the quest as a reward, it will say that the tokens are bind on pickup, which normally means they are bound to the character who got them and you can only spend them on the character you got them on. However, the prosperity tokens are legacy bound. When you earn prosperity tokens on any character, they go into the pool that's located in your currency tab and any of your characters can spend those tokens. One important thing to know though is that the prosperity tokens are legacy bound, but 
most of the rewards are bind on pickup, which means once you uh, use them on one character, you can't send them to the other one. So you'll one, make sure have to buy the items on the correct character you want to use them on, and two, won't be able to shuffle them around or put them in your legacy bay. To spend your prosperity tokens, there is a vendor on the promenade near the event that sells the Feast of Prosperity rewards. You can get all kinds of fun and silly rewards including a new outfit, chef's hat, new mount with a cooking pot on the front, two new pets, some toys and emotes, some titles, and decorations related to the event including two disguise terminals. There's also two tactical equipment items you can buy with tokens that give you more prosperity tokens when you do the two event mini games. These are called the Enhanced Seasoning for New Cooks and the Improved Axle Grease. At the time of making this video, I'm saying this because I hope they change it in the future, these are not worth buying as it only gives an extra 10 tokens for the story cantina rush and an extra 20 for the hard cantina rush. This means with a tactical costing 2,250 tokens, you would need to run the cantina rush mission on story mode, as well on hard mode, 75 times each to break even. If you got the perfect rush bonus every time, you would have to run them together 57 times each to break even. In terms of achievements, um, there's not a lot. There's some uh, basic achievements about completing the different mini games and quests multiple times. There's a three hidden achievements related to the cooking mini game that you won't see until you complete them. And there's also a achievement for completing the serving Cantina Rush mini game perfectly without missing any tables. There's also two story achievements. Uh, one will give you a title called The Abundant which has you supporting Gaborga in the story. This will probably be completed over time. And the other one is the Magnanimous for supporting Duba in the story. And I assume you can probably only do one per character. So if you want to get them both, uh, hop on a second character. There's also one more awesome achievement that will give you the legacy title of Galactic Chef, which you get for completing all the achievements related to the uh, Feast of Prosperity event, including all of the hidden ones. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Feast of Prosperity event. Um, it's a quite quick and easy event. If it's something you only have an hour or two to go check out, go try the cooking mission once, go try the serving mission once. If you have more time, go do a world boss and the... Uh, prep work quest that has you gathering materials and if you have lots of time it's a kind of cool event to log in every day and go do um completing the uh daily quest i would say it takes maybe half an hour max and it uh, depends how fast you get at them too i'm going to be going over all the rewards in a completely separate video so if you want to see what each of the rewards cost what they do and what they look like you can check out that video as well I hope you guys have a lot of fun in the new limited time event, and I'll see you in game. As always, may the feast be with you. If you want to show your support for this series, or to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. These massive event guides have been a ton of work, and if you really want to show your support, check out sutteresa.com slash Patreon, or click the join button to join this channel through YouTube memberships. See you later!